Well everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the iPhone 16 and compare it against the iPhone 8 and see which particular phone is the better one for you. Now the interesting thing going on here between both these devices is that the iPhone 8, the number 8, is actually half as much as the 16. So that is kind of a quirky thing going on here. I will probably tell you for the everyday average person, the iPhone 16 is a significantly better phone than the iPhone 8. I genuinely can't think of a reason or a situation where the iPhone 8 is a better phone. Maybe, just maybe from a price tag standpoint, that phone is better. Otherwise, in almost every single situation I can imagine, the iPhone 16 is a completely better phone here. And please, please, please buy that phone over the iPhone you know, 16 or the, over the iPhone 8. If you want to pick up either one of these iPhones, though, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there for the cheapest prices I find, and you can help support the channel at the exact same time. Now, starting off with the outside of both of these particular devices, on the front side of the iPhone 8, which came out back in 2017, is giving you a 4.7 inch Retina HD panel. Now, it's an IPS panel, it's only 60 hertz. It has a lot of bezel around it, the home button on the front, it is a pretty basic type of panel when it comes down to it, and it is a fairly outdated panel as well. Like if you're going to go through and like pick up a phone, this is a very, very old looking phone, which is surprising because Apple is still selling a phone like this, like with the iPhone SE 3. Otherwise though, for the everyday average person, I probably would not recommend anyone to go ahead and buy a phone like this. I mean, it's just outdated and the software is outdated too. We'll get into that later. But the iPhone 16, even though this panel on the 16 isn't the best in the market, it still is leagues above the iPhone 8 as it should be. You're getting a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display on the iPhone 16. And that phone visually looks so good. It is a really good looking display. It's a very good looking panel. And this is a really big asset for that type of device as well. Being able to go through and buy a phone like the iPhone 16 is a very, very big deal. And I personally do think this is a way better panel. You're getting the dynamic island at the very top, which is really nice. Very thin bezels. It's an OLED display, but it's also only 60 hertz as well, which is kind of a downside for that phone. But I definitely would tell you in almost every single way, the 16 is way better than the iPhone 8. You're getting flat sides on the iPhone 16, curved sides on the iPhone 8, a lightning port on the bottom of the iPhone 8, where you're getting a USB type C port on the iPhone 16. So different charging ports, but I genuinely do think that is a very big asset. Even if I had to go and change my charging port for the 16, I would still prefer that than having lightning because USB-C really is that big of a change. So I think that in and of itself is another very big thing going on here as well. On top of that, another very big thing to keep in mind here too is the fact that on the back, frosted glass back with a dual camera setup on the iPhone 16, we're getting a single camera setup on the iPhone 8 with a standard glass back. So that right there again is another pretty big thing to keep in mind there as well. The build quality of the iPhone 16 is just so much better. And on top of that, you're getting wireless charging on both. You're getting MagSafe capability on the iPhone 16 which is a really nice feature. But if I'm going to go through and like look at both these devices in almost every single way I can imagine, the iPhone 16 is a far better looking device than the iPhone 8. So from that side, that kind of covers it up there for the most part. Now on top of that, when it comes down to the price tag side, this is probably the main advantage the iPhone 8 has over the 16. Like the iPhone 16 is like $829. The iPhone 8 you can probably buy for like less than $100. So that right there is a pretty big difference. Being able to go and buy a phone that is significantly cheaper is a probably a really big deal for some people. So that right there could be a big thing to keep in mind. So if you're trying to find the cheaper phone here from a price tag standpoint, it pretty much is going to be the iPhone 8. But I wouldn't even classify it as a better value per dollar because I think the 16 is just that much better of a device. Now when it comes down to the camera side of things, there is a big difference here. So for one, the iPhone 8 is giving you a single 12 megapixel you know, main camera, just a 12 megapixel wide angle camera, where the iPhone 16 is giving you a dual camera setup, a 48 megapixel fusion camera, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. So from this side, again, in almost every single way you can imagine, you are getting a significantly better performing camera on the iPhone 16 than the iPhone 8. So this right there is another very big deal. Being able to go through and buy a phone like on the iPhone 16 is going to be another major asset for that particular device. So for one, you're getting things like, you know, you're getting portrait mode on both, but you're basically getting cinematic mode inside of the iPhone 16, which is really cool. You are getting Dolby Vision up to 4K at 60 on, you know, the iPhone 16 on the front and the back. The iPhone 8 can only do 4K at 60 on the back, then 1080p on the front. You're also getting only 1x zoom on the iPhone 8. We're getting 2x zoom on the iPhone 16. You're getting spatial video, you're getting spatial photos and videos on the iPhone 16 as well. And in every single way you can imagine, the iPhone 16 is a way better performing device. 
So if you're wanting the better camera here in every single way you can imagine, it really is going to be the iPhone 16. And that is basically my preferred type of you know camera here. So in terms of that side, that kind of covers it up there for the most part as well. Now, on top of that, another very big thing to keep in mind here too is the software longevity. So when it comes down to both, there's a pretty high likelihood where the iPhone 16 is already going to be the longer lasting one here. And how do we know that? It's because the iPhone 8 is already pretty much done getting software support. So the iPhone 8 is already kind of done with its software support cycle right now. The iPhone 16 is just getting started. That phone has so many software updates ahead of it. And I genuinely do think if you're in the market and you're wanting to go and buy a phone, the iPhone 16 makes a lot of sense to go and buy. This phone is supported with software. It's just getting started. And that's the one I would recommend almost every single person to go ahead and buy because that's the one that still has some updates out of it. The iPhone 8 is already done. So why would you already go ahead and buy a phone that's already going to be like outdated with software, right? It doesn't really make too much sense for me. On top of that, another very big thing is basically the batteries. The battery on the iPhone 16 is significantly better than the iPhone 8. You're getting like nine hours of extra video playback inside of the iPhone 16 than the iPhone 8. So that right there again is another very big deal. If you're going to go through and pick up a phone, I would much rather buy a phone like the iPhone you know, you know, 16 with a way better battery than the iPhone 8. So from that side as well, that kind of covers it up there from that perspective too. Now when it comes down to the performance side, the iPhone 8 is giving you that Apple A11 bonnet chip inside of it with three gigabytes of RAM, with two gigabytes of RAM, where the iPhone 16 is giving you that Apple A18 chipset inside of it with eight gigabytes of RAM. So once again, in almost every single way you can imagine, you're getting a way better performing device on the iPhone 16 than the iPhone 8. And this is basically just what ends up happening when you're going to go through and pick up a newer device. And every single way you can imagine the iPhone 16 is faster. Also, the gesture, the gesture design on the iPhone 16, being able to just swipe up and move around with your phone is so much better than having to go ahead and constantly click on that home button to come back home on the iPhone 8. That is a very annoying thing. And it can literally add up so many seconds per thing you're trying to do. And it just feels like such a sluggish experience. Whereas on the iPhone 16, it is so much faster, it's so much smoother. And I genuinely do think even though that phone has a 60 hours panel too, it's so much of a better performing device. And I love the iPhone 16 a lot more than I love the iPhone 8. So overall, I think the iPhone 8 was a great phone when it first came out and you know, it was good, but the 16 is such a better phone. And if you're going to go through and pick up a device, it makes so much more sense to go and buy an iPhone 16. I don't really know of any reasons why anybody should be buying an iPhone 8 anymore, unless you're trying to get a collector's item or something like that. Otherwise, go through, buy an iPhone 16, but there's also a lot of phones in between. You can go through and buy something like an iPhone, you know, like 12 or an iPhone 13 and still get a very big upgrade as well. If you have more money, go for the 13 Pro or 14 Pro. Those would make a lot more sense for me to recommend to people than the iPhone 8. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there for the most part. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that'll mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, Solon.